Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. Thank you very much for visiting our YouTube channel. Hope you enjoy this video. And if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. So today I want to introduce you to five breath indicators you can use to help time the market. 80% for a breath thrust, 80 volume percent for a volume thrust, high low percent, strong uptrends versus strong downtrends, percent above 200 day EMA, and percent above 50 day EMA. So the first indicator we're going to focus on is advanced decline percent. And that measures the degree of participation. You can see in the second indicator window, we have advances in green, declines in red. And if you get 450 advancers, that shows a high degree of upside participation. That is very bullish. That means 90% of stocks in the S&P 500 advance because we're calculating advanced decline percent for the S&P 500. If you get 450 decliners, that means 90% of stocks in the S&P 500 decline. That is broad downside participation, and that is bearish. So to get 80%, the next, thing, the next step is to get net advances. And that's when you subtract the number of declines from the number of advances. So you can see in this example, we had 100 declines and we had 398 advances. So you would have a net of plus 298. So for example, if you had say 450 advancers and 50 decliners, as I'm showing up here, then you would have 400 net advances. And you can see here that when you divide that by 500, the number of stocks in the index, you get plus 80%. So before we get to 80%, you can see net advances. When they get above plus 400, that shows a lot of upside participation. And when they get below minus 400, that shows a lot of downside participation. Now, the reason we use 80% is because it normalizes the indicator. You can't just use net advances because there are 600 stocks in the S&P, small cap 600, there are 100 stocks in the NASDAQ 100. So you need to divide by the total number of stocks to get a percentage, which is the percentage of net advances, basically. And that is 80%. And so you can see here that we had three days where we moved below minus 80%. And that basically kick-started this, this decline that led to the start of the bear market. We can see a couple of actually four plus 80% days in March. But if you look to the downside, you can see more days when 80% was below minus 80%. So clearly a lot more selling pressure than buying pressure. So how do we get a breath thrust signal? So the next indicator is AD volume percent. AD percent measures number of advances and declines. An advance is plus one, a decline is minus one, regardless of market cap or volume. But AD volume percent puts volume into the equation. So that means the higher the volume, the more influence that stock has on the indicator, and that favors large caps. And so you take the volume of advancing stocks, you subtract it from the volume of declining stocks, and you divide it by the total volume in the S&P 500. And you can see that we had a number of days where we got above plus 80%, four to be precise, but look at all those days below minus 80%. That shows a lot of strong volume, a lot of big volume in the declining stocks, in the big stocks as well, and that is a bearish signal. We get the same signals for the volume thrust if you get below minus 30%, that's bearish. You get above plus 30%, that's bullish like we did in September. And then here in February, we got below late February, below minus 30% for a bearish volume thrust. 
So now we move to high, low percent. Now this one is not going to trigger as often as the first two because it is based on 52-week highs and 52-week lows. Now, as we saw here in the last three weeks, we went very fast from a 52-week high to a 52-week low in the S&P 500, and that was reflected also in stocks. But basically, the high-low percent indicator is the number of new highs, which you see in green, less the number of new lows, which is red. And then we normalize that indicator by dividing it by the number of stocks in the index, the S&P 500 in this case. So you can see here we had 200 new lows and only seven new highs. So high low percent would have been at minus 193. That's a lot of net new highs, if you will. And then when we normalize that by dividing, we get it in percentage terms that was minus 38.6%. So I set my thresholds at plus 10% and minus 10%. And you can see this indicator was bullish throughout the year. It got above plus 10% on a regular basis. But then in late February, it moved below minus 10%. And that told you that new lows were expanding. And if a stock hits a new low, that means it is in a strong downtrend. If you're hitting a 52-week low, all right, that is significant. And when we got to this, you know, below around minus 20%, actually, on February 28th, it was there, then that's like 20% of stocks in the S&P 500 are hitting new lows. That is not a healthy market, and that tells you that something is not right or we're moving into bear mode. So now we want to measure the number of stocks in uptrends versus downtrends. And we did that as well in a way with high-low percent because it was measuring the basically the number of stocks in strong uptrends, 52-week highs, versus the number of stocks in strong downtrends, 52-week lows. And if you look at the percentage of stocks above the 200-day EMA, which is this next indicator, that also tells you how many stocks are in some sort of an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, my levels for this are 60% and 40%. And the reason I don't use the 50% level is because it is often a battle zone. There you can see, you know, we touch the 50% level quite often. And so I'm looking for enough critical mass on the upside or the downside, so to speak. So in this example, you can see when we get above 60%, which we did uh, further back here, but we were getting above 60% on a regular basis throughout the year, and that was bullish. And when we finally moved below 40%, that meant that basically more than 60% of stocks were in downtrends, and that's significant. All right, the S&P 500 can, you know, work its way higher when 52% are above their 200-day EMA, but once you get, you know, Less than 40% above the 200-day EMA, it's a real struggle, or it's a bear market. And that was a signal there in late February. So again, this is a longer-term indicator. So we had the more sensitive indicators triggering, and we had the longer-term indicators triggering in late February. So the fifth indicator is the percentage of stocks above the 50-day EMA, and as you can see on this chart, you get more moves above and below the 50-day EMA than you do of the 200-day EMA. And so for that reason, I put a much wider threshold for my bullish and bearish signals. But basically, when this indicator is above 80% and you have more than 80% of stocks above the 50-day EMA, that shows exceptional strength, and that is bullish. But if you get a move where this goes below 20% and you basically have more than 80% of stocks in the S&P 500 below the 50-day EMA, that is a signal that something is amiss. And that happened in late February. So note that at trendinvestorpro.com, we do follow the breadth indicators in tables for the major indexes and for the 11 sector SPDRs. 
And here's the commentary that is currently available. There's a free article, Setting Expectations Post-Crash. And I also went and looked at prior bear markets to see what we could expect in an article studying past bear markets and crashes for clues and setups. That's in the premium section. And just to give you an idea of what this breath table looks like, it did trigger bearish at the end of February. There you can see the three major indexes and all nine indicators were bearish by the 27th of February. It's not a perfect system, but it can help you stay on the right side of the trend. And then there you can see the previous signals that we've had. Caught a nice uptrend there. Even stayed bullish in January, February, March 2018, but got bearish in March 2000, uh, sorry, October 2018. And now, of course, bearish until proven otherwise. And then a little further below, we do have, uh, well, the sector table was not done on this day. I did it on another day. But we do have that for the 11 sectors. And I'll just flip and show you that one as well so you can get an idea of what it looks like. This is the report from Friday, uh, March 6th. And all uh, sectors pretty much were bearish by then because everything was hit in the last part of February and the beginning of March. And there you can see. So this was updated as of early March. And we still had three, sorry, four bullish signals, but 30, uh, uh, 29 of the 33 signals were red or bearish. And the weight of the evidence was clearly bearish there. So that concludes this video. Thanks very much for visiting our YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Again, thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day.